restrictive diseases. The lab values that we see in restrictive diseases, guys, basically all you have to know is that restrictive diseases causes you to have all low lung volumes. Restrictive diseases cause you to have all low lung volumes. So total lung capacity is low, FVC can be low, FEV1 can be low. However, if your FVC is very, very low, your FEV1 to FVC ratio can actually be either what? Normal or increased, exactly. Either normal or increased. So that's really important for you to know. And that all relates to the whole numerator and denominator um, changes. What about elasticity in restrictive lung diseases? Your elasticity is going to increase. Why does your elasticity increase in restrictive lung disease? Because your compliance is going to be really poor. You can't get that um, uh, uh, air in. And because you can't get that air in, your elasticity, which is the balance, is going to increase. So what's the most common etiology when we're talking about restrictive lung disease? That is going to be interstitial lung disease, which is going to be kind of like fibrosis, essentially. So let's talk about fibrosis. A young male on methotrexate for rheumatoid arthritis presents with shortness of breath. He is seen by a pulmonologist and found to have decreased lung volumes and slightly increased FEV1 to FVC ratio. His DLCO is going to be decreased. What is the likely diagnosis? DLCO decreased and you have a slightly increased FEV1 FVC ratio. We're talking about pulmonary fibrosis. So this patient has a restrictive lung pattern rheumatoid arthritis, and methotrexate. And all of these things can cause an interstitial pattern and a restrictive lung disease pattern. 40-year-old male with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis has greater maximal effort um, expiratory flow rate than predicted. So his maximal expiratory flow rate is high. What best explains his expiratory flow rate being very high? So he has a restrictive lung disease, but why is his maximal expiratory rate high? Well, that is because you have increased radial traction on the airways. And that increased radial traction on the airways in restrictive lung disease is extremely important for you to know. Okay? So what effect does increased radial traction have on resistance? Well, increased ra uh, uh, radial traction, what that, what that does is it causes you to open up the airways a little bit more and thus you decrease the resistance. And so that is really important for you to know, increased radial traction on airways in a fibrotic, in lung fibrosis. So what will the chest x-ray show in restrictive lung disease and fibrosis in particular? Bilateral reticular nodular opacities. And especially in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, you see a CT scan showing honeycombing of lungs and fibrosis between the uh, uh, interstitium and the surrounding alveoli. On lung biopsy, what is going to be the pathological finding in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? Well, it's going to be lymphocytic infiltration with alveolar wall fibrosis. And that all relates to the fact that this is a inflammatory disease. Okay? All right. Why do I want to bring sarcoidosis up in this? Because sarcoidosis can cause you to have restrictive lung disease as well. And sarcoidosis is a very high yield pulmonary pathology for you to know. An African-American patient presents for a rash on her shins. Her chest x-ray is significant for bilateral hilar fullness. What is the likely pathological finding seen if patient had bronchoscopy with biopsies? What are you going to see in sarcoidosis? You're going to be seeing what? Non-casein granulomas, and that's characteristic of sarcoid. Activated macrophages and multinucleated giant cells. What is going to be the skin finding related to Sarcoidosis, this patient had it in the vignette, that is erythema nodosum. And these are painless, pain, or painful, sorry, subcutaneous nodules on the pretibial surfaces. What other disease process can have erythema nodosum as a dermatological manifestation? Erythema nodosum can also be in inflammatory bowel disease, Bouchette syndrome, which is related to oral aphthous ulcers, arthritis and gen genital ulcers, as well as coccidiomycosis. So these are all, er th these are all pathologies that can have this sh uh, shin rash, which is erythema nodosum. We're going to talk about pneumoconiosis, and this is a great principle that I want to introduce to you guys, and that is the think like the test maker principle. I want you to predict exactly how the test makers can put a concept into a question for you so that you are one step ahead of them. 
Okay, here we go. A coal miner who has diffuse fibrosis of the lung and black tinge to the parenchyma. What are we thinking of here? Coal miner? We're thinking about coal workers, pneumoconiosis. That was an easy one, right? Okay. A patient who is in the sandblasting industry with fibrotic nodules of the upper lobes, also calcification of the rim of the hilar nodes with birefringent silica particles. What are we talking about? Silicosis, exactly. Relate to the sandblasting and relate to upper lobes. A NASA worker who presents with hilar lymph nodes and non-caseinating granulomas on biopsy. NASA, what do we think of? Aerospace, aerospace is related to beryliosis, exactly. These are all the different pneumoconioses. So this rapid fire really will help you kind of pick out the key buzzwords so that you can integrate this on your USMLE. Asbestos is a big one, okay? A patient presents with weight loss, fatigue, and is short of breath. Exam shows decreased breath sounds, dullness to percussion, and decreased fremitus bilaterally. Now, go ahead and, and synthesize. All of these questions you should be synthesizing. What exactly is going on? His chest x-ray, or his CT, sorry, shows nodular pleural plaques. What is the likely pulmonary exposure which may have caused these findings? So, we are thinking about asbestos, and when we think about the buzzword plural plaques, the US Emily wants us to key in on mesothelioma especially, okay? So, what is the most common cancer related to, sorry, asbestos, not um, uh, mesothelioma? Most common cancer related to asbestos is going to be bronchogenic carcinoma. So the two things that you need to know is that bronchogenic carcinoma and mesothelioma are both related to asbestos exposure. It's seen in construction workers and particularly high yield shipyard workers. And you can get fibrosis of the lung and pleura with pleural effusions, and so basically, the plural effusions is what I was getting at when uh, I was writing this question. The key buzzword with related to the pathology findings in asbestos is this ferruginous body and this alveolar macrophage. When the ferruginous body and the alveolar macrophage, when they interact, they are going to release these cytokines which are important in fibrosis. These cytokines include TGF-beta, IL-12, and PDGF. These are all involved in fibrosis and extremely high yield for you to know. What is the pathological hallmark of mesothelioma? That is going to be somoma bodies. Somoma bodies in mesothelioma. Okay? So, let's talk about somoma bodies. I want to integrate what are all the cancers related to somoma bodies. Okay? So MoMA bodies are going to be related to papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. So MoMA bodies are going to be related to serous papillary cystadenal carcinoma of the ovary. Notice the pattern of papillary in, in the uh, first two. 